It's the week of August 20th, 2018, and this is the Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy Podcast. This is episode 20, 16 of 2018. In today's show, the man, the myth, and the legend, Jay Zilski, joins Josh to discuss weather variability, white mold, and SDS in soybeans. And now, your co host Pioneer Field Agronomist, Josh Schaffner, and Jay Zilski. Well, thanks, Erica. Jay, uh, welcome to the show, and uh, nice to have you back over and to get you back on the show as Ryan's taking a little uh, much-needed time off this week. Absolutely. I was really excited to come over this morning and participate in today's podcast. You bet. So certainly, Jay, um, you were kind of rolling through the month of August here in a hurry, and I, I still think you know the big story is probably just the progression of the crop and also just the variability of the weather the last 30 days, which is probably going to have the biggest impact on the final outcome. Absolutely, Josh. And it was interesting last week, uh, I was in the uh, northeast portion of my territory, uh, just south of the southwest of the Twin Cities, New Market, down to uh, the Lonsdale area. They, since planting, have had just under seven inches total of rain since uh, uh, May 1st. And, and then as they get a little bit closer to home, closer to Mankato, out in the Cortland area, which is out towards New Ulm, in the month of June alone, they had about 20 inches of precipitation. So it just goes to show how much variability. There's always a certain amount of variability mm-hmm. every year. This year, I'd say there's extreme variability across our area. Yeah, and, and even if you look at the last 30 days, the rainfall variability, which is also going to have a huge impact on maybe the final yield, the grain fill, the bean yields. You know, we're ranging from last 30 days some areas have got maybe two to three inches or some are struggling to get probably past that three quarters of an inch and it'll be interesting but it's definitely going to play a factor in something we got to think about when we look at the final uh, performance so with that erica uh, gdu update uh, certainly i'm um, kind of excited to hear what you got there absolutely so in rochester minnesota since our last show and since may 1st we're at 2194 gdus and normal for this time is 1778 so we're up 416 gdus Last year at this time, we were negative 94. Since May 10th, we're at 2,081 GDUs, and normal is 1,709, which means we're up 372 GDUs. And last year at this time, we were negative 72. So we are trekking well above normal this year. Yeah, so, so Jay, if my math is right, if you look at from May 1st this year in Rochester compared to last year, that's a 510 GDU swing, which um, my math says that's flirting of just shy of a month. And that's that's hard to imagine. And I know out in my area, we're probably running about 350 to 400 heat units ahead of a year ago. I remember the same time a year ago. This is the week of the Pro Farmer Tour, crop tour. Yep. And I remember that time, this time a year, a year ago, uh, we didn't even have any corn that was beginning to dent. Even yep. just showing a hint of a dent. And, and this year, we've got fields that are going to be in full dent planted that first week of May. Yeah, and it will be interesting. You know, Jay, we were talking with her before the show you know, not seeing tremendous disease pressure leaf-wise on the corn, but certainly, you know, foliar fungicide, what's that impact going to be? And slowing that crop down, that advantage, it'll be interesting to watch, you know, treated fields versus untreated or some checks down the stretch just to see how much we can slow down that maturity. Because obviously, mm-hmm. at this point, the, the slower the better. Absolutely. It seems like we're pushing this crop along a little bit faster. And I'd like to see, I always like to tell folks, grain prefers to be made in a crock pot, not in a microwave. And, and kind of with those kind of heat unit accumulations, it's more like that corn's in a microwave. So yeah. we'll have to see what happens. Well, like you say, those fungicides slowing that crop down a little bit towards the finish. I'm going to be really anxious to see where guys have some of those fungicide comparisons this year. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, so thank you for that update. So now let's take a look at the finishing touch for the 2018 crop. Josh and Jay, lots of growers have been questioning lately whether or not to spray for aphids at this point in the growing season. What's your guys' take? Well, Josh, uh, you know, we're, it, it's interesting because a lot of times guys will look at the calendar and say, well, you know, we're beyond the middle of August. we gotta, we got to stop treating for aphids. And, and to my way of thinking, okay, it it's comes down to crop stage. And, and really day length is going to trigger migration of those aphids back into the buckthorn. Mm-hmm. And uh, as we were talking before the show, right now, if a person this week is out scouting fields, continue to encourage people to do so. If they open up that canopy and they see a mess of aphids there, it's one thing to do. Get aggressive and treat for those aphids. For sure. And, and in my 14 years in the business, two times I've seen aphid populations, you know, continue to climb almost right into Labor Day weekend. It's rare, but it can happen. And certainly with numbers have kind of risen here the last 10, 12 days, we still got to look at it. You know, threshold wise, is it 250, not 250? Um, you know, Jay, my unscientific method right now, if I walk in and open the canopy and say, oh, this is not good, I'm probably going to spray if it doesn't like give me a heart attack when I walk in, I'm going to probably count a little bit and see, but you know, 
if I'm sitting at 250 on chest high beans and they don't look to be rapidly increasing, you know, I might roll the dice there, but um, you're right. We just got to keep scouting because um, until they crash and it's over, it's not over. No, I tend to agree with you, Josh. Uh, absolutely. And, and we saw some situations a, a week ago where things really took off in a hurry. And so really encourage people to continue scouting their fields. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you for that update on aphids. Um, another topic of discussion is white mold. Can you give us a little update on that at this point in the growing season? Yeah, certainly the time of year that we think about it. And, um, you know, a year ago, this is really kind of right when we start to see so see white mold show up. I just remember heading to one of our growing point training sites and, and starting to see fields from the road where I'm like, oh, that's got, that's got a major white mold look. And you get out there and sure enough, it was there. You know, as I've traveled, you know, around the area, I've seen white mold. I'm not saying there's not some isolated pockets here and there, but as I walk fields, it's more, Jay, I can find a plant here and there. I'm not seeing, you know, the acre size or the low spots really dipping down and seeing big white mold. Um, not out of the wood yet, but I think this temperature being a little bit elevated might be our best friend. That's what we're tending to see as well, too. I mean, I've walked quite a few fields over the last couple of weeks um, scouting for soybean aphids. And really only a handful of occasions that I saw any, any white mold at all. And, and really, I think we're, we're in a situation where, um, like I said, I think the heat is helping us out in that respect as far as kind of keeping that white mold uh, in check. But that doesn't mean that uh, we don't need to be thinking about what we might do next year on some of those fields that will be going back to beans uh, in 2019. For sure. All right. So thank you for that second update. Um, our last agronomic topic of discussion is sudden death syndrome. We seem to have a little bit of that popping up around the area. Um, Jay and Josh, what are your thoughts for control in the future? Well, in my area, really last week was when we started to see some of the first of the uh, sudden death syndrome show up. You kind of see those spots from the road where you see some yellowing of the beans, kind of scattered areas. You, know, you go out in the field and look, and I think Eric is going to end up tweeting a picture in a few minutes there where you see that the leaf veins continue to stay green, but that area between turns yellow to, to brown and, uh, you know, could be a brown stem rot as, as well. And I always like to encourage people to, to split the stems open. At the center of that stem's brown, we've got brown stem rot. If not, in all likelihood, we've got sudden death syndrome. And so, you know, the tactics that we're encouraging people to, to utilize are going to be looking at variety selection and also the uh, Ilevo seed treatment. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. And certainly, yeah, it seems like around this every other year cycle, 2016 was more of an SDS, not a white mold. 2017 was more of a white mold, not SDS. And now we put beans back on those acres of 16, and, and there's SDS again. And I, I just remember even all winter talking about there's one thing around variety selection that feared me this year. It was, you know, make sure we take care of ourselves on those SDS acres. And certainly, Jay, you hit the nail on the head. That's our best control method is right there. Look at your varieties. Make sure we got the right seed treatments on there. And seeing some good things with Ilevo. I mean, as I see fields that are showing some pressure, you know, seeing the varieties and that seed treatment hold up really well. And, um, you know, certainly we talk about those two things and yeah, it works extremely well managing SDS across the area. You know, Josh, I was looking earlier at some of our agronomy sciences research where we had over 300 locations over a period of years recently. 84% of the time we saw a positive response and right around 70% of the time that response was greater than two bushels to the acre. Mm -hmm. And what I see here, you're right, we're seeing kind of every other year and yet we're seeing things just gradually, we're ratcheting mm -hmm. up a little bit higher, a little bit higher all the time. And so I think it's something that people really need to address with that variety selection and the use of that Ilevo seed treatment. Absolutely. And well, Jay, you kind of mentioned it there in the open too. It is Pro Farmer Week. Mm -hmm. uh, that tour kicked off today. I know we have some close colleagues that are out there on parts of the tour and will be giving us updates. Uh, we're also going to be doing some stuff locally, Jay, getting some updates from some of our replicated trials. We can look at, you know, what's trend line comparing this year to last year. It'll be interesting. Um, but certainly stay tuned on our social media. We'll also be doing a podcast live, Jay. You're going to rejoin the show on Thursday uh, from the finale in Rochester. And we'll be talking about some of our local findings and some of the buzz around what we've been hearing all week. Say, Josh, can I give him a sneak peek of what I've been seeing or can I do that now? You can. Okay. Yeah. Actually, last week I had a couple of fields that I went in uh, a week ago. And uh, using the pro farmer method, I came up with an average of about 200 bushels to the acre. And these are some pretty good fields. Mm -hmm. But what I find interesting about it is if you can make a comparison to a year ago, that's probably about 20 bushels off of where we were at last year, comparisons at the same time of year. Yeah, it'll be interesting, and we'll get a good gauge on it here um, this week, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing a bunch of people in Rochester as well. Uh, Erica, always important to know where to find the show. 
Uh, absolutely. So the most prominent place to find the show is on Twitter. So Josh, what is your Twitter handle? I'm at Josh Schaffner. And Jay? At Seed Zeke. And I also think you maybe had someone you wanted to highlight. Absolutely. I've got one of my sales reps is on the Pro Farmer Tour, and you can follow him. That's Farmer Mitch W., and uh, he's on the Pro Farmer Tour this week. You bet. And one other thing here, Erica, this is your last episode with your summer internship. And uh, certainly we want to extend a, a big thank you for your participation in the show. And uh, I think you've taken the show. Help us take it to new heights all summer for sure. Absolutely. Awesome job, Erica. We're going to miss you. Thank you for that. Um, so feel free to continue following me on Twitter at Erica Robertson. Um, you can also follow on Periscope via, via the live broadcast and replay. Um, you can search, subscribe via iTunes at podcast.pine com and search on YouTube keywords Buck, Schaffner, and Pioneer. That's a wrap for episode 16 of 2018. The show was recorded in Goodyear, Minnesota. It is produced by Josh Schaffner, Brian Buck, and Eric Robertson. Thanks for listening, and be sure to tune in next time. <laughs>